Brooklyn Aboyan, thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. The uh, topic tonight on our series of uh, My Thoughts, a positive lesson from COVID-19. You know, the word COVID-19 uh, stands for coronavirus disease. What I find interesting is that the Hebrew word kavod, honor, and the word COVID really sound very much alike. It made me think, is there any connection between the two words? So this pandemic has made us all re-examine many of the things in our lives, things that we may have taken for granted before, like breathing. Before this pandemic, pandemic struck, if someone were to ask you, what was the most important thing in your life? I'm sure that the first thing that you would have answered would not have been breathing. Today, it is something that is on everyone's mind. But how does that connect to the concept of kavod, honor? I believe this pandemic was forced upon us so that we might relook many of the choices that we have been accustomed to make in our lives. You know, not all the consequences of the pandemic have been negative or detrimental to our lives. You know, as the pandemic has dragged down many of the tight restrictions that were enforced initially were loosened such as social distancing, the obsession with hand washing, and, and even masks. What I found recently was that the decorum, or better yet, the lack of decorum in the synagogue, has started to drift back to where it was before this pandemic began. Over the past two years, somehow I had forgotten just how much talking went on during the services. I forgot how many times the rabbi would have to stop the chazan and ask the congregation for proper decorum. I saw a great sign that read, if you need to talk during prayers, talk to God. Those members of the congregation that attended services during the earlier years of the pandemic were somehow quieter. I'm not sure whether it was because of the wearing of a mask, social distancing, and less people just attending services, which contributed greatly to a quieter and more respectful atmosphere during the services. I'm sorry to say that once again, the rabbi is asking people for proper decorum. That I think is unacceptable. So I decided that this, my thought, should examine proper kavod, honor and respect, proper etiquette in the synagogue. <clears throat> As we all know, World War II and the Holocaust devastated Ashkenazi European Jewry. At the same time, Sephardic Jewry, those who lived in the Middle Eastern and Oriental countries were for the most part spared from the tragic events of the Holocaust. There was a Sephardic leader who wondered out loud if the reason why Sephardic Jewry was for the most part spared the horrors of the Holocaust was because Sephardim do not talk during services as opposed to their Ashkenazic brethren, proper decorum. The majority of Jews who attend conservative reform synagogues are much more prone to be respectful when they attend services. They do not talk. Even if they do have to say something to their neighbor, they do so in a whisper, never in a loud voice. The same can be said for Christians and Muslims. They show proper respect when they attend their houses of worship. I often wondered about those members who walk out of the main sanctuary just before the rabbi begins to speak. I'm certain that there are those who have good reasons for doing so, but still, I would think that it shows a certain lack of respect. Imagine if you were the person who was about to give a lecture and half your audience got up and left. <laughs> I don't think you would feel very good. I'm sure the rabbi has dealt with the issue himself and bears no one any ill will, <clears throat> but he's only human. Showing him the proper honor and respect should always be paramount in our minds and in our actions. When some people uh, attend services in an Orthodox synagogue, they seem to forget they're standing in front of God Almighty himself. It happened one time to Reb Levi Yitzhak Bardichev. In the middle of services, walked up to the bima in the center of the synagogue and banged on the table, and he called out in a loud voice in Yiddish, and he said, Gotezu, God is here. I think that many of times we forget exactly why we come to a synagogue and to whom we are offering our prayers. Imagine if you were standing in front of a king of flesh and blood, a dictator 
<clears throat> someone who held your life and the lives of your family and loved ones in his hands. Do you think he would carry on a conversation with anyone other than the king himself? After all, thumbs up, you live, and thumbs down, you die. I would think that you would be very much in the moment, careful to express the greatest amount of respect and reverence. Every word that you would say would be said with forethought. Your words would be spoken clearly and with proper articulation. According to the code of Jewish laws, you should not even utter words of prayer with phlegm in your mouth. Your clothing would be proper and clean. Your shoes would be shined. You would bow and stand before the king with awe and trepidation. Slouching or standing with your hands in your pocket would be a sign of disrespect. I see people who often pray with their hand or hands in their pocket. I find it interesting that when I was going through basic training during my tour of duty in the U.S. Army, if the sergeant saw me with my hand in my pocket, well, he would immediately tell me to drop and knock out 25 push-ups. You don't get much lower on the totem pole than being a trainee during basic training. And yet, somehow it was unacceptable for me to put my hand in my pocket. How much more so should one present themselves before God Almighty with the ultimate awe and respect? Think of it. Would you stand in front of a great person whom you admired, slouching and with your hand in your pocket? One thing to remember, though, is that telling someone else to stop talking during services, well, that can create arguments and hard feelings. There is a reason why the Torah in the portion of Kedoshim states the double term, Hocheyach Tochiyach, Es amisecha. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. But the verse ends with the words, Lo sisa alav chet, and you shall not bear a sin because of him. Rashi explains, this is a warning not to shame him in public. You know, I don't talk during prayers or during the reading of the Torah. However, it happened one time that I was somewhere for a Shabbaton, and there were not enough chumashim for everyone to follow the Torah reading. And I happened not to have a chumash. And the person next to me started to talk to me, and I replied. Well, <laughs> someone immediately shushed me. They were, of course, 100% correct. But nonetheless, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I felt just the feeling of me, me, he shushing me. <laughs> there are times when what we have to say is correct, but where and how you say it makes all the difference in the world. I see people every week who come to services wearing shorts, blue jeans, and other very casual attire. Imagine if you were called to the Oval Office to meet the President of the United States. I'm certain that you would dress appropriately. Think it through. When you come to a synagogue to pray, you are standing before the King of the world. Is there anyone or anything greater than that? During the weekdays, many men have to rush off to work after services, and that being the case, many men are compelled to dress accordingly. But when it comes to Shabbat and the holidays, the Yom Tovim, we should all dress in our finest clothing, not the casual clothing that we knock around in. You know, the saying goes that clothes make the man. The way that you dress has an influence on how you feel, and behave in all situations, so dress to impress. We always have to remember that being an Orthodox Jew comes with certain responsibilities, whether you like it or not. When we dress up to attend services, we show our reverence to our Creator. The show of respect creates what we refer to as a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name. On the other hand, when we dress down, it shows a lack of respect and appreciation of where we are and before whom we are standing. It may well diminish the possibility of our prayers reaching up to the heavenly throne. So dress for success. In the Code of Jewish Law, it states that it is forbidden for a Torah scholar to walk in public with stained clothing. If they were to do so, they would create what we would refer to as a chil a desecration of God's name. There is also a law that a congregation can remove a chazan if he is not dressed properly. Our sages tell us that the worst sin that one can transgress, one for which there is no complete repentance in this lifetime, 
is when we cause a chil Hashem. I find it interesting that the side of evil gets us to confuse the commandment to love our fellow Jew with the commandment to show proper respect and reverence to God, especially when we stand before God in a house of prayer. When we are in attendance in a synagogue, we should be focused on praying to God, but somehow the commandment to show reverence to God and focusing on our prayers takes second place to the commandment to love our fellow Jew. Somehow camaraderie has taken precedence. Then after we leave the synagogue and we are out in the world conducting our business affairs, well, then somehow we forget to show love to our fellow Jew and now it becomes a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Whatever happened to love your neighbor that we felt was so important during the services? You know, I'm puzzled by the fact that many people don't appreciate the importance of coming to services early or at least on time. For one, if you are late, there are so many laws that you have to know about what to say and what to skip. Then there also arises questions about when you are permitted to interrupt your prayers to answer a prayer recited by the Chazan and when you cannot. In addition, when someone shows up late at a train station or an airport, well, they've missed their ride. When you have a business meeting and you show up late, it really shows a lack of concern and respect for your client's time. Your tardiness, well, may well cause you to lose your, that account. When we pray, we are asking God Almighty for all types of blessings, requests for ourselves and our families. Coming on time might help convince God to answer in the affirmative. There are those who say that somehow when, you are, when, they, when they are in a synagogue, they really don't feel God. The question is not whether you feel God. The bigger question is, hmm, does God feel you? I mentioned at the beginning of this thought that I saw a connection between the English word COVID, which stands for coronavirus disease, and the Hebrew word kavod, honor. You know, we refer to this pandemic as COVID-19, the number 19 alluding to the year of its origin, 2019. But the number 19 is also the gematria of the Hebrew word ochi, my brother. I wonder if God has brought this pandemic to the world as a wake-up call. Somehow we have lost our connection to the concept of loving people. COVID-19, COVID honoring our brothers. This should be a time for us to respect others, listen to their opinions, keep an open mind. We should all have the right and the desire to search and find truth. You know, what a sad world we live in when you can't believe anything that you read or hear. What happened? We live in the most affluent of times. Things have never been better. And yet, hatred runs rampant. We all need to remember what our synagogue means to us in our way of life. Though God is everywhere, there is something special when we come together to offer our love and prayers to our benevolent Father in heaven. Yes, we can pray at home, but as the sages tell us, Barov Am Hadras Melech, in a multitude of people the king is praised. Praying together with the quorum of men of Minyan makes a difference. God, so to speak, waits for us like a loving father, anticipating, waiting for the prayers that we are about to offer. With each and every person that enters the sanctuary, they add their own spiritual light, that pintaliid, a spark of divinity that resides deep within our hearts. They all join together in that light that emanates, shines forth from the sanctuary, burning brighter and brighter. Together, as one, we offer a spiritual torch that ascends to the heavenly throne above. A reach nichoach l'ashem, a sweet savor, a pleasant smell to God Almighty above. Well, enough is enough. Let's all just take a time out. Let us remember that there is only one person who could have brought this pandemic and there is only one person who can end it, God Almighty himself. So let us not waste this opportunity to reconnect in our homes and especially in our synagogues, but it must be done with proper respect and decorum. Together, as citizens of the world, let us work together to build a better, kinder, and more godly world one that is even better than the world we had before. Going backwards is not acceptable. And with that, may we help 
to usher in the coming of Mashiach to Canaan quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for listening. Again, may God bless you and yours with happiness, health, and safety. And uh, may you enjoy all that is good. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to you and your family. Thank you very much for attending.